Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2021. I'm Lisa Martin. Pleased to welcome back to the program, the CTO of VMware, Kit Colbert. Kit, welcome back to the program and congrats on your oh, new role. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. So you, you've been at VMware for a long time. You started as an intern, I read. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, 18 years as a full-timer, but I guess 19 if you count my internship. So quite a while, it's, it's many lifetimes in Silicon Valley. Right, many lifetimes in Silicon Valley. Well, we've seen a lot of innovation from VMware in its 23 years. You've been there the vast majority of that. We've seen a lot of successful big tech waves ridden by VMware. In mm -hmm. April, VMware pulled Tanzu and VMware Cloud Foundation together, VMware Cloud. You've got some exciting news with respect to that. What are you announcing today? Yeah, well, we got a lot of exciting announcements happening at VMworld this week, but one of the ones I'm really excited about is VMware Cloud with Tanzu Services. So let me talk about what, what these things are. So we have VMware Cloud, which is really us taking our VMware Cloud Foundation technology and delivering that as a service in partnership with our public cloud providers, but in particular, this one with AWS, VMware Cloud on AWS. And we're combining that with our uh, Tanzu portfolio of technologies. And these are really technologies focused at developers, at folks driving DevOps, uh, building and operating modern applications. <clears throat> and what we're doing is really bringing them together uh, to simplify customers moving from their data centers into the cloud and then modernizing their applications. It's a, it's a pattern that we see very, very often, this notion of migrate and then modernize, right? Once you're on a modern cloud infrastructure, it makes it much easier to modernize your applications. Talk to me about some of the catalysts for this change and this offering of services. Was it you know, catalyzed by some of the events we've seen in the world in the last 18 months and this mm -hmm. acceleration of digital adoption? Yeah, absolutely. And we saw this uh, across our customer base, across many, many different industries. Although, as you can imagine, those industries that, that, that were really considered essential uh, were the ones where we saw the, the biggest sorts of accelerations. We saw a tremendous amount of people needing to support remote workers uh, overnight, right? And cloud is a perfect use case for that. But the challenge that a lot of customers had was that uh, they couldn't take the time to retool, that they had to use what they already had. And so something like VMware Cloud was perfect for that because it allowed them to take what they were doing on-prem and seamlessly extend it into the cloud without any changes, able to do that you know, almost overnight, right? But at the same time, what we also saw was the acceleration of their digital transformation. People are now online. They're needing to interact with an app uh, over their phone to get something you know, remotely delivered or to schedule maybe um, an appointment for their pet because you know, a lot of people got pets <laughs> during the pandemic. And so you just saw that this rush toward digitization and you know, these new applications needing to be created. And so as customers move their application estate into the cloud with VMware Cloud and AWS, they then had this need to modernize those applications, to be able to deliver them faster, to respond faster to the very dynamic nature of what was happening uh, during the pandemic. So let's talk about uh, some of the opportunities and the advantages that VMware Cloud with Tanzu Service is going to deliver to those IT admins who have to deliver things even faster. Yep. So let me talk a bit about the, the tech and then talk about how that fits into uh, what the users will experience. So VMware Cloud with Tanzu Services is really two key components. Uh, the first of which is the Tanzu Kubernetes Grid Service, the TKG service as we call it. So what this is, is actually a deep integration of uh, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid with uh, VMware Cloud and, and the Kubernetes we've actually integrated into VMware Cloud Foundation. Folks who are familiar with VMware may remember that a couple of years ago, we announced Project Pacific, which was a deep integration of Kubernetes into vSphere, essentially enabling vSphere to have a Kubernetes interface to be natively uh, Kubernetes. And what that did was it enabled the IT admins to have direct insight inside of Kubernetes clusters to understand what was happening in terms of the containers and pods that, the, that their developers were running. It also allowed them to leverage uh, their existing vSphere and VMware Cloud Foundation tooling on those workloads. So fast forward today, we, we have this built in now and what we're doing is actually offering that as a service so that 
the customer doesn't need to deal with managing it, installing it, up, updating it, any of that stuff. Instead, they can just leverage it. They can uh, start creating Kubernetes clusters and, and uh, upstream conformant Kubernetes clusters to allow their developers to take advantage uh, of those uh, capabilities, but also be able to use their native tooling on it. So I think that's really, really important is that the IT admin really can enable their developers to seamlessly start to build and operate modern applications on top of VMware Cloud. Got it. And talk to me about how this is going to empower those IT admins to become Kubernetes operators. Yeah. Well, I think that's exactly it. You know, we talked to a lot of these admins and, and they're seeing the desire for Kubernetes uh, from their lines of business, for, for, you know, from the app teams. And the idea is that when you look, start looking at the Kubernetes ecosystem, there's a whole bunch of new tooling and technology out there. We find that people have to spend a lot of time figuring out what the right thing to use is. And for a lot of these folks, they say, hey, I've already figured out how to operate applications in production. I've got the tooling, I've got the standardization, I've got things like security figured out, right? Super important. And so the, the real benefit of this approach and, and this deep integration is that it allows them to take those those tools, those operational best practices that they already have, and now apply them to these new workloads fairly seamlessly. And so this is really about the power of leveraging all the investments they've made to take those forward with modern applications. And the total adjustable market here is pretty big. I heard your CTO referring to that in an interview in September. And I was looking at some recent VMware survey numbers where 80% of customers say they're deploying applications in highly distributed environments that include mm -hmm. their own data center, multiple clouds, yeah. uh, edge. And also customers said, hey, 90% of our application initiatives are focused on modernization. So VMware clearly sees the big t TAM here. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely massive. Um, you know, we see uh, many customers, the vast majority, something like 75%, are using multiple clouds or on-prem in the cloud. Uh, we have some customers using even more than that. And you see this very large application estate that's spread out across this. And so, you know, I think what, what we're really looking at is how do we enable uh, the right sorts of consistency, both from an infrastructure perspective, enabling things like security, but also management across all these environments. And by the way, that's another exciting thing that I've ne neglected to mention about this announcement, VMware Cloud with Tanzu services, not only includes the Tanzu Kubernetes grid service, giving you that sort of Kubernetes uh, cluster as a service, if you will, but it also includes Tanzu mission control essentials. And this is really the next generation of management when you start looking at modern applications. And what, what Tanzu mission control focuses on is enabling uh, managing Kubernetes consistently across clouds. And so this is the other really important point is that yes, we want to make VMware Cloud, VMware Cloud infrastructure the best place to build and operate applications, especially modern ones. But we also realize that you know, customers are doing all sorts of things, right? They're in the native cloud, whether that's AWS or Azure or Google, and they want ways of managing more consistently across all these environments, in addition to their VMware environments, both in the cloud and on-prem. And so Tanzu Mission Control really enables that as well. And that's another really powerful aspect of this is that it's built in to enable that next level of administration and management. That consistency is critical, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest benefits that customers are getting is that familiarity with the console, the consistency of being able to manage so that they can deploy apps faster, um, yep. that as businesses are still pivoting and changing direction in light of the pandemic. So I imagine that that is a huge, uh, from a business outcomes perspective, the workforce productivity there is probably pretty, pretty big. Yeah, and I think it's also about managing risk as well. You know, <clears throat> one of the, the biggest worries that we hear from uh, many of the CIOs, uh, CTOs, executives that we talk to at our customers is this uh, software supply chain risk? Like, what is it exactly? Like, what are the exact bits that they're running out there, right, in their applications? Because the reality is that um, you know, those apps are composed of many open source technologies. And, you know, as we saw with SolarWinds, it's very possible for someone to get in and, you know, plant malicious code in, into their source repository such that as it gets built and flows out, it'll, you know, just go out and customers will start using it. And uh, it's a huge, huge security vulnerability. And one thing on that note that customers are particularly worried about 
is the lack of consistency across their cloud environments. That because things are done different ways and the different teams have different processes across different clouds, it's easy for small mistakes to creep in there for little openings, right? That a hacker might be able to go and exploit. And so I think this gets back to that notion of consistency and that you're right, it's great for productivity, but the one I think it's almost in some ways, you might say uh, for many of these folks more important for is from a security standpoint that they can um, validate and ensure they're in compliance with their security standards. And by the way, you know, this is, uh, for most com companies, a board level discussion, right? The board is saying, hey, like, do we have the right controls in place? Because it is um, such an important thing and, and such a you know, critical risk factor. It is a critical risk factor. We saw you mentioned solar winds, but just in the last 18 months, the, the massive changes to the threat landscape, the huge mm -hmm. rise in ransomware and DDoS attacks. Oh, yeah. You know, we had this scatter, everyone went home and you've got, you know, the edge is booming and you've got folks yeah. using, uh, you know, not using their VPNs and things when they should be. So that the fact that that's a board level discussion and that this is going to help from a risk mitigation perspective, that consistency that you talked about is huge, mm -hmm. I think, for a customer in any industry. Yep. Yeah, and it's pretty interesting as well. Like you mentioned ransomware. So we're doing uh, some work on that one as well, actually. Not specifically with, with this announcement, but it's another VMware Cloud service that plugs into this uh, seamlessly, VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery. And one of the really cool features that we're announcing at VMworld this week is the ability to actually support and, and maybe uh, handle ransomware attacks. And so the idea there is that if you do get compromised and what it typically happens is that um, the hackers come in and they encrypt you know, some of your data and they say, hey, if you wanna get access to it, you gotta pay us and we'll, we'll decrypt it for you. But if you have the right DR solution, um, that's backing up on a fairly continuous basis, it means that what, whatever data might be encrypted, you know, would only be a small delta, like the last, let's say, hour or two of data, right? And so what we're looking at is leveraging that DR solution to be able to very rapidly restore specific individual files uh, that may have been compromised. And so this is like one way that we're helping customers deal with that. Like, obviously we want to put a whole bunch of other security protections in place, and we do, and we enable them to do that. But one thing when you think about security is that it's very much defense in depth, that you have multiple layers of the fail safes there. And so this one being kind of like the end result if that hackers do get in, they do manage to compromise it, they do manage to get a hold of it and encrypt it. Well, you still got unencrypted backups that you control and that you have um, a very clean delineation and separation from just like kind of an architectural standpoint that the hackers won't be able to get at, right? So that you can control that and restore it. So again, you know, this is something very top of mind for us. And it's funny because we don't always lead with the security angle. Maybe we should, <laughs> as I'm saying it here, but uh, but it's something that's uh, very, very top of mind for a lot of our customers and something that's also top of mind for us and that we're focused on. It is because it's no longer, if we get attacked, it's, it's when, and they've yeah. got to be able to have the right recovery strategy so that they don't have to pay those ransoms. And of course we only hear about the big ones like the solar winds and the colonial pipelines and there's many more going on. I want to get back to VMware Cloud with Tanzu Services. Talk to me about how this fits into VMware's bigger picture. Yeah, 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 great question. Thanks for bringing me back. I love to geek out on some of these things. So, um, but when you take a step back, so what we're really doing uh, with VMware Cloud is trying to provide this really powerful infrastructure layer uh, that is available anywhere customers want to run applications. And that could be in the public cloud, could be in the data center, could be at the edge, could be at all those locations. And you, know, you mentioned edge earlier, and I think we're seeing explosive growth there as well. And so what we're really doing is driving uh, broad optionality in terms of how customers want to adopt these technologies. And then, as I said, we're sort of, you know, we're kind of going broad, many locations. We're also building up in each of those locations, this, this notion of Tanzu services being seamlessly integrated and doing that, uh, you know, starting now with VMware Cloud and AWS, but expanding that to every, every location that we have. In addition, you know, we're also really excited. Uh, another thing we're announcing this week called Project Arctic. Now, the idea with Arctic is really to start driving more choice and flexibility into how customers consume VMware Cloud. Do they consume it as software or as a service? And where do they do that? So traditionally, the only way to get it delivered as a service would be in the public cloud, right? VMware Cloud and AWS, you can click a few buttons and 
you get a software-defined data center set up for you automatically. <clears throat> now, traditionally on-prem, we haven't had that. We, we did do something pretty powerful uh, a year or two back with the release of VMware Cloud on Dell EMC. We can deliver a service there, but that often required new hardware, you know, new setup for customers. And customers are coming back to us and saying, hey, like we've got these really large vSphere deployments. How do we enable them to take advantage of all this great VMware cloud functionality from where they are today, right? They say, hey, we, we can't rebuild all these overnight, but we want to take advantage of VMware cloud today. So that's what really what Project Arctic is focused on. It's focused on connecting into these brownfield existing vSphere environments and delivering some of the VMware cloud benefits there. Things like being able to easily, uh, well, first of all, be able to manage those environments through the VMware cloud console. So now you have one place where you can see your on-prem deployments, your cloud deployments, everything. Be able to really easily move uh, applications between on-prem and the cloud, leveraging some of the VMware cloud disaster recovery capabilities I just mentioned, like the ransomware example. You can now do that even on-prem as well, because keep in mind, it's people aren't attacking, you know, the hackers aren't attacking just the public cloud, they're attacking data centers or anywhere else where these applications might be running. And so uh, Arctic's a great example of where we're saying, hey, there's a bunch of cool stuff happening here, but let's really meet customers where they're at. And many of our customers still have a very large data center footprint, still want to maintain that. That's really strategic for them. Or as I said, may even want to be extending to the edge. So it's really about giving them more of that flexibility. So in terms of meeting customers where they are, I know VMware has been focused on that for probably its entire history. We talk about that on theCUBE at every VMworld. Where can customers go? Like what's the right starting point? Is this targeted for VMware? cloud on AWS current customers, what's kind of the next steps for customers to learn more about this? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a bunch of different ways. So first of all, there's a tremendous amount of activity happening here at VMworld. Um, just all sorts of breakout sessions, like you know, detailed demos, like all sorts of really cool stuff, just a, a ton of content. I'm actually kind of, I'm in this new role, I'm super excited about it, but one thing I'm kind of bummed out about is I don't have as much time to go look at all these cool sessions. So I highly recommend going and checking those out. Um, you know, we have hands-on labs as well, uh, which is another great way to test out and try VMware products. So hol.vmware.com, uh, you can go and spin those things up and, and just kind of take them for a test drive, see what they're all about. And then if you go to vmc.vmware.com, that is VMware Cloud, right? We want to make it very easy to get started. Uh, whether you're in just a vSphere on-prem customer or whether you already have VMware Cloud and AWS, what you can see is that it's really easy to get started and that there's a ton of value add services on top of our core infrastructure. So it's all about making it accessible, making it easy and simple to consume and get started with. So there's a ton of options out there and I highly recommend folks go and check out all the things I just mentioned. Excellent, Kit, thank you for joining me today talking about VMware Cloud with Tanzu Services, what's new, what's exciting, the opportunities in it for customers from the IT admin folks to be empowered to be Kubernetes operators to those businesses being able to do essential services in a changing environment. And again, congratulations on your promotion. That's very exciting. Awesome, thank you, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. For Kit Colbert, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2021.